Hello, everyone. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so in this lecture, we'll try to see a few other uh, complicated uh, structural drawings. This is a drawing from one of the uh, high rise building again. So I'm just showing you one ground floor framing plan. OK, see the beam layout is called as a framing plan. So here you see how they have denoted it. Hmm? So let me show you one difference here. So it's loading. Yeah. So you see here what he has written, you know, GHB5, GHB6, GHB7 he has written. What do you mean by GHB5? So G stands for ground floor. So it's a ground floor beam. Okay. H is a horizontal beam. Since it's going in horizontal direction, they're telling that this is a horizontal beam. So it's called as a ground floor, ground horizontal beam five, ground horizontal beam six, ground horizontal beam seven. In the same way, you see another the difference here. What is written here? GV B6. It is GV B6. It is wait. Okay, I think it's not clearly visible. I'll just you know pull it down. Okay, okay, okay. It won't be. Okay, just concentrate on this part. This would be better. Huh. This is better at least. Yeah. Understood the ground. This now you see here. What is written here? GVB16, GVB10. So that means it's a ground beam, but it's going in vertical direction. Vertical means not upward. I mean, it's like this is x-axis for me, and this is y-axis. So x-axis they are calling horizontal, and this y-axis along this whichever is going, no, they are calling it as a vertical beam. Understood? No. So when you have a bigger uh, beam layout plan, when you have a bigger framing plan and all, so a few people adopt such kind of. Uh, uh, naming and all. So you shouldn't get confusion, confused that why they have written G H. G stand for ground, H stand for horizontal, B stand for beam. Again, V stand for vertical. Okay. Now we'll go to the another part. For the same building, they have given this complete beam schedule. So this is something different, which we haven't seen so far. So what is trying to tell you see here. So again, these things, you know, beam uh, marking, they have written G H B 1, G H B 2. This is understood. Then they have written something called as category, like one, two, three, see? One, two, 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 three, one, one. And what is this category? We'll come back to this later. Apart from that, he has given us what is the size of your beam, the breadth of your beam, and the depth of the beam is given. That is understood. Next, he has given the span, that what is the span of this particular beam. Usually, they don't mention the span, but here he has mentioned the span, the, uh, I mean, the B1 beam, the span is 4,000, 3,150, 3,650, and all. Now come to this part. This is your reinforcement part. But for the reinforcement, you see, he's writing left hand span. He's writing intermediate. Intermediate means middle span. And he is writing, he is writing right hand span. That is also fine. But how he has written, see, he has given some name T1, T2, T3, B1, B2, B3. Okay. T4, T5, T6, B4, B5, B6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T11. So you're able to understand. So this is how the naming is given. We'll try to see what is the name. And here, this is sidebar. Sidebar means your side face reinforcement. So there is no side face reinforcement since the depth of the beam is not exceeding for more than 750 mm anywhere. You don't require any side face reinforcement, so you cannot see that. And this is stirrup. So stirrup, he's writing S1, S2, S3, and then he's writing the type and all. So how do we understand such drawings? So for that, first thing you need to understand that something there is something written as category. That means if you come here, see here, this is your category one beam. So if he has written category one, then you have to come here and you have to look into this particular longitudinal section of the beam. Suppose if it is written category two, then you have to come here, then you have to look into the category two beam. So this is my category two beam. Then again, this is my category three beam. You're getting my point. This is category four and this is category five. So in this way, all the categories are given for each beam. For example, if I want to see GHP 12 beam, so the category is three, come back here, and look into the category three. So where is my category three? The so category three is here. So I need to look into this beam. And in this beam, I'm supposed to understand what is T7, what is T8, what is T9, what is B7, what is B7 plus B8, what is B9, what is S1, what is S2, and what is S3. Understood? So this is how you are supposed to do. Again, the concept remains the same. I told you many times. In beam, you shouldn't worry. You'll be having a top straight bar, bottom straight bar, top left extra, top right extra, bottom curtail. If it is a continuous beam, then you'll be having a middle continuous beam, middle continuous rebar. Apart And then if the depth is more than 750, you'll be having a side face reinforcement. Apart from that, there won't be any other 
extra thing in your beam apart from this. Okay. Now the same thing you can see it here. I'll take one beam for that matter. Let me take uh, this beam. Shall I take this beam? GHB2. I'll take GHB2 beam. Okay. And here, uh, what is mentioned? Left hand span. Okay. It will be difficult then to understand. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Since it's a continuous beam, no. It's a continuous beam. So left hand span, nothing will be there. Only the middle portion will be there since it's an intermediate beam. So we'll do one thing. Shall I take the top bar? I'll take this one, GHB1, okay? So GHB1 uh, falls in category one, that is fine. So what is mentioning here? First, we'll see the left hand span. We have T1, T2, T3, B1, B2, B3. What, this, what is this T1, T2, T3? We'll come back to the category one. And here you try to understand. So T1, he is showing us this bar, the top bar. That means your top straight bar is your T1. Okay, not exactly top straight bar. Here they have done the lapping. Okay, so this is your T1 bar. So bar is starting from here. It will go up to here. Wait, I'll go with a different color. Yeah, bar is starting from here. Okay, it is going up to here. So this particular bar, see actually this bar should go straight only. But here they are using two different diameters of the bar. So that is why the lapping is coming. Okay, not an issue. So I'll stop my bar here. So this bar is my T1 bar. Understood? No. Now what is my T2 bar? See, T2 bar is coming in the second layer. So this is my T2 bar. You can see one more bar which is coming like this and going down. So this is two bar, T2 bar. It will come in the second layer. That is your top left extra you can call. So it is your T2 bar. See, this is your actually top straight bar. But since there is a lapping, you have done the lapping here. That's it. Okay, fine. Now, what about the next bar? So see here, T3. T3 is this lapping bar. Whatever lapping you are doing, no, here. Uh, this bar is called as a T3 bar. So it is mentioned here, T3 bar. Understood? No. Now come to the bottom bar. In bottom, what is B1? So B1 is this bar. This bar in the bottom, which will go straight. No. So this is your B1 bar. It's written B1. This is also B1. So what is your uh, B3 bar? So this is my B3 bar. This bar, what you can see, no? This one, your bottom curtail. This bottom curtail bar is telling it's a B3 bar. Understood? No? That's it. And still up. Whatever stirrup you are going to provide up to this zone, that is S1 stirrup, that is near the support. Whatever stirrup you are going to provide up to here, it's called as S3 support, S3 stirrup. And the middle stirrup is called as S2 stirrup. Okay, understood, no? That's it. Apart from that, he has mentioned that this top bar, top straight bar, whatever you are doing, it has to go up to 0 0.25 into L. That is called, that is L by 4. Now, why he has shown the lap here? We know that lapping should happen beyond l by 4 so that is why this lapping will happen at this point okay then when you're curtailing the bar in the second zone this is a bar in the second zone here is mentioning you have to go up to 0 0.15 into l usually we don't do that we provide 0 0.25 only we don't do we don't do two step curtailing that first bar will go up to l by 4 then second it won't go up to 0 0.15 we don't practice that on the side they have mentioned it here but it will be very difficult to practice on the side okay now the bottom curtailment see bottom curtail he has done 0 0.08 into l from here from the center of this column leave 0 0.08 into l one times and this bottom curtail will start from here and from here it will go and end here so this distance from the center of the beam center of the column to this distance will be 0 0.15 into L. Understood? No? So this is how you are supposed to understand this particular reinforcement and all. Hmm? So the same thing. Now, what is T1? What is the diameter of the T1 bar? You come back here. So T1, I'm supposed to provide 12 diameter 2 bar. So then what is T3? So T3 is my center bar. No. So T3 is also my 12 diameter 2 bar. That means 12 diameter 2 bar will go straight at the top in the same way, in the same way. What is my, uh, this thing, B1? So B1 is my bottom bar. Okay, apart from C, T2, there is nothing mentioned. B2, nothing is mentioned. B3, nothing is mentioned. Next is my B1. So B1 is 12 diameter 2 bar. So come back here. Where is your B1? So this is my B1. This bottom bar, this thing, bottom straight bar is my B1. Okay, bottom straight bar is my B1. So that is again 12 diameter 2 bar. So for this particular beam, 12 diameter 2 bar will come at this top and 12 diameter two bar will come in the bottom that's it okay fine hmm. so one more thing you have to understand here he has written b1 plus b2 b1 plus b2 means in the bottom if you provide three bar out of that two bar will go completely one bar at the center will go only up to l by uh, only up to see for example 
because this is little complicated. You may not understand. See, let us say in the bottom, I'm providing three bar. So one, this two bar, two outer bar will go completely. That is from here to here, this two outer bar, okay? This two outer bar will go completely, I'll tell. I'll do it up to here, up here. Then one more bar, in the same layer only, it will go only up to this distance. In the same layer, it's not in second layer. In the same layer, it will go only up to this. So this second bar, which is going you know, in the middle, which is going only up to this distance, it's a curtail, it's a bottom curtail, but it's not coming in the second layer. In the first layer only, it's a bottom curtail here. So that is mentioned as B2 here. Got it? No. Now, what is B3? B3 is a bot B3, B3 is also a bottom curtail bar, but this is coming in the second layer. Since it is coming in the second layer, it is showing it B3. It's little, uh, tip, I mean, little complicated drawing what I'm showing you. So it may take time, some time for you to understand. Okay. Yeah. Understood. This much is understood. Apart from that, come to come to the stirrup part. Stirrup, I'll explain it here. So come to the stirrup. So what is mentioned here? S1, S2, and S3. That means you are supposed to provide 8 mm bar at 100 mm spacing at left support. S3 is your right support. 8 mm bar at 100 mm. Middle, you are supposed to increase the spacing. So 8 mm at 200. So that is easily understood. So again, what you're supposed to do is for this particular beam, up to this S1 distance, your, this thing will be at 100 mm spacing. This will be 100 mm. This will be 100 mm spacing up to here. S1 is up to here. This also will be 100 mm spacing. S3 is this much. And middle portion is my, this thing S2. So this will be 200 center to center spacing. Understood, no? That is mentioned in the drawing. S1, S2, and S3. 100, 200, 100. That's it. Okay, fine. So this was all about this particular drawing. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed the lecture. And one more thing. Here, they have given the type of stirrup. So stirrup is mentioning, but what whether it's a two-leg stirrup, four-leg stirrup, it is not mentioned. For that, they are mentioning the type. For type, you have to come here. Here, they have given a lot of types. Okay. I think previous drawing also, we had seen something like this. So this is type one. That means it's a two-leg stirrup. Suppose if you mention type 1G, then you're supposed to provide three legs. That is one main ring and one link you're supposed to provide. Suppose if he's mentioning to a type two, it means it's a four-leg stirrup. So two stirrup, two full stirrup you're supposed to provide. Suppose if he's mentioning uh, type 2G, then it's a four-leg stirrup, but... Uh, Okay, it will be like this. Okay, fine. So what is the difference between this and this? So the difference between this leg and this leg is that this stirrup will be something like this. Okay, it will go like this. And next, it will go like this. You're getting my point? No, it will be like this. Your, that means your reinforcement will be coming like this. It will be one, one bar will be here. Second bar will be here. Third bar will be here. Fourth bar will be here. Next bar will be here. Next bar will be here. Next bar will be here, fine. So if you have a uh, four reinforcement like this, okay, I mean four on the uh, four on this side, four on this side, you're supposed to use this type two. This is also a four leg stirrup, but it's a type two G. Here, what will happen? Here, it is something like this. So you'll have one main reinforcement, which a main lateral test, which will go here. Next lateral test will be inside this. So here also it will be, okay, wait, what is the difference then? Ha, ah, correct, no, correct, correct, fine. Here also it is four reinforcement only. So here also it is four main reinforcement. Like this. 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 And like this. But the difference is that here it's like this will go like this. And from inside this another one is created. But here it is like this. Understood? No, that is the difference between this and this. Then again, if there is written type 3, then you have to follow this. Type 3G, you have to follow this. Here one link will come. So this way you see, I'll be providing you this drawing, go through the drawing. In this way, all other reinforcements will be provided. Okay, understood? That's it. So this was all about the stirrup and all. Now, in the next lecture, I'll be explaining you few other important things. This is very important, which you need to understand. So these things, I'll be covering it in the next lecture. That is about the, uh, when you have different uh, beam depth, how you are supposed to do the connection. We'll try to see that in the next lecture. So I hope you have enjoyed the lecture up to here and I'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.